Sons of God are also called the Watchers. And these watches come from a book uh, called the Book of the Watchers, but it's more popularly known as the first book of Enoch. And it's actually also used in the, in the Old Testament, this, this name. Daniel 4, 4, verse 13, 17, and 23. In the Greek version of Daniel, the word there is actually translated as watchers. Now, it looks like there are a category of angels. Now, Enoch obviously didn't write this book, so there are at least three books attributed to Enoch. Now, he, they, they just give them that name. It doesn't mean Enoch wrote them. Uh, but, yeah, it's called the Book of the Watchers. Now, this book is very influential in church history. It influenced the Old Testament, as we'll see, and it influenced the New Testament as well, because actually... The New Testament writers, Peter and Jude, cite specifically Enoch. The provenance, the origin is at least 300 years before Christ, before the apostolic age. So this is a very well-known story uh, in Jewish circles. So we're going to read a, a passage here from the first book of Enoch. And when the sons of men had multiplied, in those days beautiful and comely daughters were born to them. And the watchers, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, Come, let us choose for ourselves wives from the daughters of men, and let us beget for ourselves children. The giants, or Nephilim, who are, who are produced from the cohabitation of spirits in prison, 1 Peter 3.19, and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Because they are born from men, and from the holy watchers, Angels, Daniel 4, 13, 17, and 23, Septuagint, mm -hmm. is their beginning and primal origin. That sounds almost verbatim, right? Yeah. With Genesis 6. The sons of heaven appears as morning stars in the book of Psalms. Morning stars and sons of heaven, are par it's a parallelism, a Hebraic parallelism. So the point being that this is very uh, germane to Judaism at the time. They're called giants. And uh, we'll see in uh, the book of Numbers, in Deuteronomy, and in the book of Joshua, all over the place, you'll see how these survive the flood or our later uh, eruptions of, of what Genesis says they were on the land and then later they were on the land, but they're called giants. So that's the Nephilim. The Nephilim become giants. It's, it's synonymous. The cohabitation of spirits. Now that's a reference obviously to, to 1 Peter 3. And they're evil spirits, i.e. demons, we could say. And then you have the holy watchers there connecting to Daniel. So Enoch should be canonized. No, uh, of course not. The canon is the canon as, as we have it. Unless you think other books, other extra, so-called extra biblical books or apocalyptic works, should be canonized as well just just because they're alluded to in certain uh, scriptures. There are 30 plus, 30 extra Jewish works cited by the Old Testament. 30 plus. And there's at least three pagan writers cited by the New Testament writers. But if these people read Enoch in, in this case, yes. Why can't we, right, to learn, to, to get the context, to get the background of what we're talking about?